After taking control of every Medamora asset, he had a meeting with one of his business associates whom noticed that Rankin was edgy and before you know it, his business associate was shot in the head, meaning it's not over, there's still someone out there after Rankin's life. At the same time, Maxwell Bishop was having a nightmare walking with his lover and his lover's brains was splattered all over his face and when he chased after the direction where the shot was taken, he caught a strange figure and his phone woke him up which was a text from Dave Rankin that someone is still after his life. This proves regular Dave right that Echidna was innocent in which Rankin tried to shut him up and now convinced that it was the Hyunis, the number one crime family trying to kill him to eliminate competition in which Smoke stated that it might have been the work of Taipan avenging his boss's death but Rankin told her that his man knows Taipan's location and it wasn't him. Okay, now let us talk about the crime family for a moment. There are three crime families. The Hyunis have already been the number one crime family and in their own right, the most feared and most ruthless. I mean, these guys are like ninjas and they're like bees when they go for the attack. After them is Medamora, who was led by the late Echidna and his top bodyguard was the ruthless number one assassin Taipan, whom had gone into hiding since the death of his boss. And the last but not the least is the Pizda Rulius, whom are led by Dave Rankin, with his talents pushed the crime family to the number two spot, knocking off Medamora. So the agreement was to strike at the Hyunis, but Chad Fingerman wasn't going with them for he felt uncomfortable walking with Maxwell Bishop, whom suspected him of killing his lover and couldn't give him information on where he was on that day. For everyone else told Maxwell Bishop where they were except Fingerman. They know that attacking the Hyunis wasn't going to be easy for they were no small potato for these were guys that fight to the death. Killing the bodyguards at the entrance was easy but facing the katana kids with their swords was going to be hard work. Coming out of the lift they met face to face with the head of the Hyunis and his wielding sword gangs whom told them that he had been been expecting them. Regular they pressed the button of the lift to close the door because he wasn't ready. While the Hyunis boss asked his swords men to handle the assassins. In the lift, the group were counting the numbers of the gang and how they were going to handle them for it wasn't going to be easy. But they had no choice but to face the music and as soon as they came out of the lift, the fight began as Tarkington ran his way into the gang and shooting their way past them, cracking of skulls smashing of faces, slamming of bodies on the table, more shooting. Before you know it, they killed all the katana kids. Now, when they got to the boss of the Hyunis upstairs, they accused him of starting the war by trying to kill Rankin, for he sees the Pizda Rulios as competition, but told them he had nothing to do with the attempt on Rankin's life. That there was no point to it because they were number one. That it is of disservice to himself and his family to go after a person like Rankin whom is beneath them, that he was surprised that Maxwell Bishop fell for Rankin's trickery, that the question no one is asking is who benefits the most from all this. Suddenly, regular Dave spotted Fingerman at the top of a building opposite them, but before they know what was happening, the Hyannis boss was shot in the head by Fingerman, and before he could kill anyone else, Maxwell Bishop shot at a fire extinguisher as a distraction, and they all escaped his shootings. Furious and disappointed in himself, Maxwell Bishop let the rest of the group know that they have been played by Rankin all this time. That all the attempt on his life was orchestrated by him. But why?